everybody, it's Layla, Health Education Manager here at BI Arthritis, and I'm back again with another update. So this press release is about Stills disease, and under Stills disease includes adult onset Stills disease and systemic juvenile idiopathic arthritis. And basically, there is a systemic score that is used with Stills disease. And this study is basically seeing how well this tool can predict if someone is at high risk for developing more serious complications. Systemic score was introduced in the 1990s, and it's basically one point per symptom that a Stills disease patient has. These symptoms include fever, rash, pleuritis, pneumonia, pericarditis, liver involvement, enlarged spleen, swollen lymph nodes, high white blood cell count, sore throat, <clears throat> muscle pain, and abdominal pain. And pleuritis has to do with inflammation of um, the lung, and pericarditis is the inflammation of the... And so the study collected information from 597 patients, and <clears throat> After collecting all of that, they found that a score of 7 or plus, um, so 7 out of 12, was a strong indicator that the patient was at high risk for developing complications. And so, again, these the 7 points is from 7 different symptoms that this um, patient exhibits. And the complications that are likely to occur are liver problems, macrophage activation syndrome, or lung disease. And we have actually a macrophage activation syndrome patient guide for those of you who are interested in learning more specifically about macrophage activation syndrome. We have also a lot of resources on Stills disease in general, AIarthritis.org. And other findings from this from this study include that 88% of these patients out of the 597 have joint pain or inflammation, 66% have skin rashes, 44% have liver problems, 13% developed macrophage activation syndrome, 6.9% developed lung disease, and there's a death rate of 3.4% overall in those 597 patients. And lastly, systemic score was found to be a very valuable tool, a very valuable tool for doctors to predict which patients are at risk for severe complications, and they can take steps to prevent or delay the onset of those symptoms. So um, doing this score test once a patient is diagnosed is very important to be able to target the treatment plan to better focus on those areas that might be of concern depending on what the different symptoms are. And they actually go into, for patients that have liver issues that specifically they exhibited swollen lymph nodes, enlarged spleen, heart lining inflammation or the pericarditis, and the pleuritis, the lung lining inflama inflammation. So those were the symptoms that were more likely to develop into liver issues. And then for the lung issues, if someone had a sore throat, swollen lymph nodes, enlarged spleen, and liver issues, that's what that those are the symptoms that were more likely to correlate with that. And those who do also develop the lung disease were more likely to be affect to be affected so much that they pass away. And that's basically what the study said. And it's good that we are reevaluating these scoring systems. That seems like a little bit of a theme in some of the press releases that I have looked at so far is that they are reevaluating the scoring systems that we have had for years just to make sure that they are still accurate and are still helpful and seeing if there's any edits or changes that need to be done. So it's great to see that they're always looking at for ways to improve and to do the best that they can for patients. And yeah, that kind of is the end of that press release. Tomorrow does start, or Monday does start our um, push ahead for to get as many sessions done as we can and report back to you. Stay tuned for more information on that. And until then, again, this is Layla, Health Education Manager at AI Arthritis, and I will talk to you later. Bye.